sort of devilishly clever. It's a story of four or five kids who all, as m most kids have, have grown up on horror films, slasher films, whatever you want to call them. And uh, somebody begins um, a series of murders in their hometown that are very closely attached to the general styles of certain horror films. And uh, very quickly it devolves that this person is now after one of the principles of, of this group of kids, Neff Campbell's character. And he is using um, the techniques, the, the situations from these horror films. So there's a, a continual sort of feedback loop between the kids of how to anticipate what's going to happen next, how to survive, and what the rules are of horror films. The rules are of horror films. The rules are of horror films. A horror film is a film that seeks to elicit fear initially inspired by the literature from authors like Edgar Allan Poe, Bram Stoker and Mary Shelley. Plots within the horror genre often involve the intrusion of an evil force, event or personage into the everyday world. Prevalent elements include ghosts, extraterrestrials, vampires, werewolves, demons, satanism, evil clowns, gore, torture, vicious animals, evil witches, monsters, zombies, cannibalism, psychopaths, natural or man-made disasters and even serial killers. For as long as movies have existed, filmmakers have been telling horror stories. Georges Méliès, The Devil's Castle, a silent three minute French film from 1896, notorious for being the first horror movie ever made. And since then, many movies have come and changed. With the advance in filmmaking technology, movies push the envelope for what's appropriate in film. There are hundreds of horror films that change the genre in one way or another. Let's take a look at some of the horror films that have shaped the genre into what it is today. 1931's Dracula has proven to be one of the most influential vampire movies ever made. The film made it clear that though horror films often took place in a fantastical version of our own world, their consequences could be every bit as dire as those we'd see in a typical drama. Supernatural horror was still new when Dracula was released in 1931. Fame director James Whale made tremendous strides in the upcoming months and years with Frankenstein in 1931 and The Bride of Frankenstein in 1935, and effectively birthed the creature feature. But Browning and Frown's flawed but remarkable Dracula, with the help of Lugosi, Fry, and expressionist styling, kicked everything off. Psycho. Alfred Hitchcock's Psycho from 1960 is by far one of the first films to really shape the genre. Take a film like Jaws for example. That opening scene was one to really get you going, but you knew it was coming. On the other hand, Alfred Hitchcock done something that no one had done before. He had his lead actress, Janet Leigh, killed off halfway through the movie, and he'd done it out of nowhere, and a lot of it was left to the imagination. Like I said, so many films have in their own way changed the genre itself, so I would need a lot more time to even pull out the ultimate list, but others like Halloween, The Texas Chainsaw Massacre, and even The Exorcist, all great movies which paved the way for the upcoming generation of horror films. But before we discuss what would happen if horror movies were to have never came to be, we need to talk about the effect the horror movies actually have on us. Fear is an emotion that people don't tend to enjoy, but the idea of being scared is exciting, cinematically at least. There's a clear divide between real life fear and horror movie fear. One might enjoy watching scary movies at 3am with the lights off, but that doesn't mean the same person might enjoy venturing down a dark alleyway at 3 in the morning. We are creatures who are built with an adrenaline system and an ability to feel fear who are now placed in an unusually safe world. Words by John Francis. Fear is one of the most strongest emotions that a human could feel, and there's no better feeling than being scared while you're in a completely safe situation. And horror movies really tap into our fear and it works. It works really, really well. Believe it or not, horror movies actually strengthen your immune system. A study of 32 men and women from 2003 found that when its subjects watch horror films, there was a spike in the creation of disease-busting white blood cells in their bodies. Now I know that's a hard one to believe, but apparently it's very true. According to Glenn Sparks, a professor and associate head of the Brian Lamb School of Communication at Purdue University, one reason for the appeal is how you feel after the movie. This is called the excitation transfer process. Sparks research found that when people watch frightening films, their heart rate, blood pressure and respiration increases. After the film is over, this psychological arousal lingers, we're just not aware of it. And that means that any positive emotions you experience, like having fun with friends, are intensified. Instead of focusing on the fright you felt during the film, you recall having a great time and you want to come back for more. 
Horror movies are usually made with a small budget and because of this, producers take chances on relatively unknown actors and directors and there are many actors who got their big break in horror movies such as Johnny Depp who started in Wes Craven's A Nightmare on Elm Street, John Travolta who starred in Brian D. Palma's 1976 Carrie and Jennifer Aniston who starred in Mark Jones' 1993 Leprechaun. Had it not been for the horror genre, a lot of actors and actresses may have not gotten the big break that they did get. Let's look at shows like House of Cards and uh, the, the, the Walk of Dead as examples. A lot of their central characters were killed off before they even got to make it to the series finale. No character is safe, and that's something that was unheard of until Alfred Hitchcock's 1960 Psycho. With the success of Wes Craven's 1996 Scream, the slasher genre was revived. A handful of slashes like I Know What You Did Last Summer, Urban Legend and The Faculty were released shortly after. It also brought back to life dormant franchises such as Halloween with Halloween 20 years later. Could it be an urban legend? Something I can help you with. Scream made it okay for horror movies to be scary, funny and smart all at the same time. It truly paved the way for many horror films to come. You can never drink or do drugs. No, the sin factor. It's a sin. It's an extension of number one. And number three, never, ever, ever under any circumstances say, I'll be right back. Because you won't be back. I'm getting another beer. You want one? Yeah, sure. I'll be right back. Oh! You see, you push the laws and you end up dead. Okay, I'll see you in the kitchen with a knife. Let's say, hypothetically speaking, George Millais never made The Devil's Castle back in 1893. Our culture would be completely different right now. Let's take a look at the 2016 Rise in Clown Sightings. One too many people must have got some sort of inspiration from these clown horror movies. And of course most of it was innocent scares, but deadly accidents have come from these sightings. Back in 1970, a movie was released that had kids scared to even go back to the beach. Following the release of Jaws, there was an increase in the number of shark sightings that were attributed to the film. A study conducted by Professor Joanne Cantor from the University of Wisconsin revealed that 43% of kids who saw the movie before the age of 13 experienced enduring problems swimming even years after seeing it. Not only that, but another devastating effect from the release of Jaws is the peak of shark fishing tournaments, also known as kill tournaments. That combined with commercial overfishing resulted in population decrease. Biologists estimate that many species numbers have dropped by 50% and some have even fallen by as much as 90% just in the eastern American coast. Now something I truly don't understand but is a major selling point is evil toys. Haunted dolls have become quite the sought after item. Websites like eBay and Etsy sell toys that claim to be haunted or even have some sort of spirit inhabiting them. Now Friday the 13th has also become somewhat of a national holiday and is ever so much connected to the horror franchise named after it. So every Friday the 13th it might be celebrated by watching a horror movie and relaxing. Without really noticing it, Halloween may have been completely different had it not been for horror as a whole. Remember the year that you dressed up in the ghost face mask after seeing Scream? Or what about the time you saw somebody walking around in a Michael Myers mask? These are small things that are influenced because of horror movies. Look, maybe horror isn't your favourite genre, but you have to admit that without it, things would be a heck of a lot different. From the developing days of horror as exemplified by Edgar Allan Poe's grotesque and creepy poems and short stories to thriller classics such as Alfred Hitchcock's Psycho, horror has always enticed audiences. If horror movies didn't exist, then we, as humans, would surely find a way to artistically express our own fears, whether it be with cinema or with art. The ultimatum is quite simple, that without horror movies, this right here wouldn't be happening. I would be miserable making YouTube videos about video games rather than something I'm truly passionate about. So although a world without horror movies would be a world I don't want to live in, it's still a really interesting thought to think about.